Hi everyone. In today's video I thought I would share how I painted this little uh, lighthouse scene using um, brush markers. Um, I'm going to be using um, the uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens and I like these because they have um, a nice um, flexible tip on them and it behaves just like a regular brush. Um, I'm also going to be using my um, permanent marker or my fine liner. Um, I'm going to be using a, a white paint pen. You could also use a white gel pen. Uh, a small watercolor brush. This is the equivalent of like a number six. Um, I have a container of water um, and I have a pencil to do some sketching. And I'll be working on um, 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. So what I've done is I've taken a small sheet of watercolor paper and I think if you haven't tried using brush pens as a watercolor alternative then you want to start small. So this is about a four by six piece of paper and I've lightly sketched out a scene and in the description box below the video I'll have uh, links to the reference photo to uh, my outline drawing so that you can transfer it to your paper if you want as well as all of the supplies that I used. So let's get started. I have um, a couple of blues in my collection. Um, I also have a red for the top of the lighthouse. I have some greens, a brown, a gray, and a black. So I'm going to start with the sky and I'm going to use my uh, blue that I have. And you can use any blue you want. You can make it a, a bright day, you can make it a, a not bright day. And I'm just kind of adding color and this is what I do. And I'm leaving space and the um, faster you go with your pen, uh, the less color that gets put down. So I'm always going too fast. And I'm gonna go, go a little bit slower. Uh, this is a very, very light blue. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the gray because I, I don't want this to be um, just one one color. And you can add as much or as little as you want. And my sky looks rather choppy right now and, and I realize that and we'll, we'll, we'll fix it all up. I do like to keep the caps on my pens when I'm not using them just so they don't dry out. You can use any um, type of brush pen that you want. I just, I really like the, uh, the Zig Clean colors. I think they're great. They come in a lot of different colors. I can buy them online. I can buy them at my local art shop. So um, for me, they're very easy to find. And now with a damp brush, I am going to go over the color that I just added. And I'm just, I'm basically softening those lines and you really want to make sure that you use watercolor paper for this because if you were to use regular paper, the water would just make the paper bubble and, and go all, all crazy and you wouldn't be happy with it. I like the streaky sky look. If you don't like the streaky sky look, you make it yours. All right, I'm gonna let this dry um, just like I would with regular watercolor and I may go back in and add more. Um, I kind of like this. I, I do want a little bit of the gray over here. So you can add it while the paper is still damp. That's okay. Just give it a nice, Give it a nice look. All right, so we have, we have our sky. Let's add, so these are going to be some rocks and the rocks are going to have some greenery. So I'm, I'm just gonna add some greens kind of here and there. Um, 
I want some like marshy grasses kind of down here at the bottom. And I'm going to layer my two greens right now. And I'm, I'm really, as you can see, I'm not being particularly fussy. Clean my brush and then I'm just going to use it to soften the greens. And this is great. It's, it's just like, you know, regular, using regular watercolor, except you have these convenient uh, sticks of color, basically. Nice brush pens. Um, you can use any green you want. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to use the exact colors I want. I have a rather large collection, so I just kind of picked and choose what struck my fancy this morning. And we have some, we have some rocks. So let's put some color for the rocks and let's soften some of that. I'm going to soften all of it though because I like, you know, I like some of the texture created with these brushes, which is why uh, one of the reasons I do like these because they, they do look like a regular brush and they, you know, they will separate out, um, you know, you can, um, Hopefully you can see in the video, the brush point really does spread out and can move around, which I, I love. That's what I love about these. They're great. Let's add a little bit of brown just here and there. Um, this brown is a, a little bit orangey, so I'm not going to add too much of it. It can get a bit orange colored. And I can always go over this afterwards with some gray or some black and, you know, have some fun with it. All right, so now we have some rocks and we have, okay. So my, my sky is dry, so I can add the red of my lighthouse. And I'm, I'm not going to uh, soften this color. I'm, I'm just going to draw with it. And that's, that's nice too. Nice flexibility with your, with your tools. Um, the lighthouse has some dimension and I, I want to try and, um, reflect that. So on the sides, I'm just going to give in the top here, I'm going to give a little bit of shading with my gray and then I'm going to soften this. I don't want my, my lighthouse to be flat. All right. And I have some windows, so I'm going to color in my windows with black. And if you go over an area that is damp and it starts to bleed, it, it happens, you know, you can always fix it afterwards. Uh, you can leave it. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it starts to really go crazy, um, you can dab the corner, dab it with a corner of your uh, paper towel and you can lightly go over it with a clean damp brush, pick up the color again and all is well. Nothing to worry about. Um, let's add some shading to our little side building here. And again, I'm going to color that. All right. So we're getting there. Things are taking shape. So let's work on our water and I have a, a deep blue for the water and I am going to concentrate the darkest colors closest to my rock line here. And then I'm going to pull the color 
towards the right. And you're going to say, wow, this is, this is messy. It's not, it's fun. Because remember, we can pull all this color and soften it. It would be great fun. And all right, clean off my brush. And let's pull this color around. And uh, some of these colors look really nice when they're when they're softened with water um, this this almost has a, a purple undertone to it it's really nice for kind of that you know dark and stormy gray look for a gray day i kind of have my my clouds doing that and my sky and Clean off my brush. I'm gonna dab my brush on my paper towel, pull off some of the excess water, and now I'm gonna start pulling some of the color. So I create uh, streaks in my water to show that um, there's light reflecting in it. And then when this dries, what we'll do is we'll add some white highlights all right that's a nice blue that is nice and deep hence its name deep blue this kind of technique is great if you like to um, travel sketch you know you can just grab a couple of pens you know um, a, a yellow some red one or two greens one or two blues a brown you know a gray and a black and you have a small collection that you can take on uh, your travels and uh, you can sketch. So I'm going to add some more blue to my sky. Now I've rinsed off my brush and I've dabbed it on my paper towel because I don't want too much water. I want water to soften what I have, but not enough water to uh, shift the color of my first layer, which can happen when you have too wet of a brush. All right, things are taking shape looking good. Let's add some texture to our rocks and I'm I'm putting the the pen down and I'm I'm pulling so that um, as you move quickly you get texture. All right let's keep this up. All right we have texture. Let's add with our, my darker green, I'm going to just flick upwards and I'm going to add some little grasses here and there. Um, just to give some interest. And then I want some taller grasses kind of down here. And I'm varying the amount of pressure I put on my pen. So if I push harder, I get bigger lines. If I push lighter, I get lighter lines. All right. And we'll have some grasses come up here. Okay. So I'm going to switch now to my uh, fine liner and I'm going to add a little bit of detail to my my drawing and um, you can you can turn your your paper if it's easier for you to uh, do the lines um, I'm just adding details kind of here and there just to add some interest you know add some darker grasses here and there um, add some details in the rocks. Um, I'm adding a darker edge along the um, bottom here where the rock meets the, the water. 
Uh, that's just something I like to do. You can use the black to, you know, straighten out your windows if they've gone a, a little bit crazy and wonky. You don't have to do that though. Um, and the faster you move your brush, the more broken the line is. So don't, you, you don't have to go super slow. You can, you can go fast. You can also go over your, your lines. If you don't like a line, then just go right over it. Um, you don't have to start over because nobody will notice one line that's out of whack. All right, have some ink details. Now let's add, uh, let's add just a little bit of darker grass here. It's a little too bright and I'm just gonna soften that, soften that in. Maybe add a little there, a little there. All right, now let's add some sparkle to our water. I'm gonna take my, my paint pen. You could also use a white gel pen. You could also use white gouache on a little tiny brush. That's fine too. And I'm just going to add some broken white lines to indicate that the water has some reflection in it. I like this paint pen because it's, um, it's got a, a acrylic based ink in it. So it's a little bit more opaque than um, the gel pens that I have. And how about we add some, some little birds. So they're kind of flying all around. And even though this is, you know, a, a relatively simple um, style of painting, I'm, I'm still going to pay attention to, um, you know, value and, and make sure that things are, are dark and where they need to be dark and things are lighter where they need to be lighter. You know, if this side of my um, lighthouse is more in light, this side will be more in the shadow, which means this little outbuilding will also be in shadow. So try and make things um, kind of artistically logical. And like I said, you can change the colors. You know, I, I grabbed colors that I happen to like. You can add colors that you like. I'm going to turn this so that I can, I want to get a nice, I want to get a nice line there. And for my railing, I want, I want those lines to, some lines I like to stick out, you know, I want them to look a little bit more pronounced. So I'll darken that line on that side and maybe we'll darken that that line there. All right. One of the things I like to do is I have these little mats. So I always like to put them on my paintings when I'm done and, and check them and see, oh yeah, if I like that or not. And it gives you an idea too, to, to um, tell if something is, is done. And I, I think this is, this is done for today. Um, I like that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and remember to click the subscribe button and click the little bell icon so that you'll be notified when I put out another video. Um, if you have any questions about the supplies I use, the techniques, please uh, leave a comment below. Um, if there's anything that you're um, interested in, you'd like me to paint also, please leave a comment. Um, and uh, don't forget to sign your artwork when you're done and I will see you in the next video. Bye.